Could be wrong about that, but I'm going to say that. So this is the first time that Knicks has been in the playoff, and I want to say since the, the uh, Carmelo Anthony day. So when you have a drought that long, you already know what to expect from the New York crowd, which people say New York is the mecca of basketball. So we already know they're starving for a championship. They're starving for their team to have success. So you already know that crowd going to be literally amplified. It's going to be hostile. And, again, my concern is how is J.D. Bickerstaff, first and foremost, is going to deal with that. How, what kind of schematics is he going to draw up? What kind of exit and O's is he going to be able to coach? What kind of adjustments is he going to be able to make like he made in game two? Like I said, the Cavs as a team made the proper adjustments in game two. But are they going to be able to bring that same mentality and make the same proper adjustments that they did in game two? Are they going to double, are they going to continue to double Jalen Bronson and keep two dudes on him for most of the game? Are they going to continue to do that? Well, I would like to think, me as a coach, that's what I would do. I mean, if, if you look at the stats, yeah, Jalen had, what, 27 the first game? He had 27 the first game. And then, basically, he had, like I said, he had 27 the first game. Twenty-seven first game. Now in game two, I was trying to pull up these stats, make sure I, you know, make sure I'm accurate with them for y'all, for my, you know, subscriber and viewers. I don't want to give y'all the wrong information. If that makes sense. Now this game, the Knicks. Okay, yeah. Um, Julius Randle, he had twenty-two points. Um, yeah, four offensive rebounds and a total of eight. Now let's. Take Mitchell Robinson. Let's look at his stats. I'm, and let's like let's like observe his stats. Now keep in mind, in game one he had five offensive rebounds, right? Total of six and eight points. This game, game two, he had one offensive rebound, four for a total of five, and he only had two points. Okay. That tells you what kind of what type of game the Cavs play in game two. Like I said, they brought the physicality. They punched the Knicks right in their mouth. Okay. Jalen Brunson, he only had 20, but he had four, you know, he had four, you know, a total of four rebounds, five assists. I'm sorry, five. He had five rebounds, and then he had six assists. He had four steals, too. So, but Jalen Brunson had 20 points. So, again, it's obvious in my opinion, the double team won. And, okay, Josh Hart, remember, 17 and 10 rebounds for him in game one. He had, what, five points? And one offensive rebound and four? Okay, like I said, you got to keep bodies on these dudes. You can't just expect that you're going to just win the game or you can assume that or assume that oh these these teams ain't gonna come to play like we're the Cleveland Cavaliers oh they're gonna lay it down they're not gonna come out here and try to you know try to win the game they already defeat because they know we're a better team it don't work that way you gotta still play the game so going to game three to be honest, I still don't know what to expect as far as what J.B. Bickerstaff is going to do or how the players are going to respond to this hostile crowd, this amplified atmosphere where everybody is going to be going crazy. I'm telling you, I, I've never been to a New York crowd, but I've seen it on TV, and I've heard it oh, for, for the past decade how crazy that crowd can get. So I don't know. How the Cavs, saw how the Cavs are going to respond to that as a team, and that's that includes JB Bickerstaff, Donovan Mitchell. I expect him to you know to respond, you know, precisely. If that makes sense. I don't expect 
Donovan Mitchell to be, you know, to play like a deer caught headlights, if that's a good analogy. Um, but I don't know how Darius, Darius, Darius Garland is going to respond, Evan Mobley, because we know how he responded in game one to the physicality that Nick was bringing. We know how he responded to it. Jared Allen, we know how he responded to it. So I don't know how he, these guys are going to respond to this New York crowd that's going to be hostile. Simple as that. It's going to be amplified to the highest level. We already know Spike Lee going to be there going crazy, trying to get in somebody's ear. This is Spike Lee. This is what he do. Spike Lee is one of the greatest filmmakers ever to produce movies. All his movies is great. Every last one of them. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Spike Lee. Like I said, Spike Lee is very, very intellectual. I think Spike Lee is a genius. And he's, he's just gifted like that. But, again, we're going to know how Spike Lee, like I said, or should I say, I like to think most people know how Spike Lee is going to be an antagonist. We know what he's going to do. He's going to be on the sideline. He's going to be waving that little New York towel. He's going to be whatever, talking junk, running his mouth, just like he did with Reggie Miller. It, it, it was it was so, 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 it, 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 no, no. It wasn't bad. It was, a, you know, somewhat of a beef between Spike Lee and Reggie Miller back in the day. But it wasn't bad. Because they ended up doing a documentary on it. And I think Spike Lee is the director of that documentary. But we all know that's what he do. That's what Spike Lee do. He like to get in the best player's ear and try to take them out of his game. So I don't know how the cast is going to respond to all of this. But, hey, it sets the stage for game three. I'm going to watch it. I can't wait to see it. I'll watch it after I get off work. But I just want to give, you know, my, my, my analysis, the best of my ability. Um, I appreciate the views, the subscriptions. Like my video. If you like, the, if you like it, hit that subscribe button. But like I said, I appreciate the views more. Y'all stay blessed. Stay safe out there. Facts from the Ghost, DJ Lottie Dottie. One love, you and your families. Later.